All right, guys, this lecture should go pretty quick because we've already got into the difference between weathering and erosion, and this video is going to specifically focus in on chemical weathering. There's a few kinds. The first thing we're going to start out with is hydrolysis, which is the chemical reaction of anything with water. The chemical reaction of anything with water. My prime example is making coffee. I do this every morning. We got water here in the coffee maker. It goes down and it filters through the coffee grains. That water will chemically react with the coffee grains and give you this beautiful black liquid down here that keeps me awake all day. Well, this also happens in nature. When it rains, water goes down into the ground. And what it does is it will dissolve the minerals. It will dissolve the minerals in the ground and it will chemically alter them. So the big thing here, because we're talking about chemical changes, is that the, what we have at the end is not the same as what we had at the beginning. Again, the coffee example. What I have at the end, this water here, is not the same of, as what I had at the beginning. It is chemically different. So over here in our real world example, Rain comes in, it filters through the soil, and it makes different types of clay minerals. And what's happening is we have a chemical change. That's the big deal, C-H-E-M-I-C-A-L, a chemical change. And that happens because of a reaction of any sub substance with water, and that's what hydrolysis is. All right, here's the surface of Mars. And if you know anything about Mars, you know it's called the red planet. We learned that back in, ast in our astronomy unit. Why is it the red planet? Because the rocks there have oxidized or they've rusted. And what we have is we have the iron in the rocks. Fe is the symbol for iron. We learned that first semester. We have iron mixing with oxygen and we get this rusting appearance here. Now, why is this important? This happens with mafic rocks here on Earth. Why mafic rocks? Because mafic rocks, as we learned first semester, are the ones that carry magnesium and iron. So when mafic rocks mix with oxygen, here on the surface of Earth, they tend to rust the rocks and they oxidize or they rust. We also see this in cars a lot. All right, next we're going to talk about something called carbonation, which is simply the mixing of water with carbon dioxide to produce something called carbonic acid. And this is really instrumental in the formation of caves. Below here, we have a picture of Mammoth Caves that's in Kentucky, and you can tell it's an active cave system. Why? Because there's flowing water here. And what's happening is this water is mixing with the carbon dioxide that it's pulling out of the air, or maybe from the plants surrounding it, and it's turning into carbonic acid. That carbonic acid is specifically eating away at the mineral calcite. And this mineral calcite is being dissolved in the carbonic acid, which is what gives us this huge cave system down below. This is one of the largest cave systems in the world. You can go visit it in Kentucky. It's not that far away. Get in the car, go outside, drive, and check it out. All right, next we have something called lichens. And lichens are a moss that eats plants. And here we have some lichens right here in this area by the river. We have these lichens hanging out over here. It kind of looks like that green plant right there, and there's some more over here. And what's happening is the flowing water from this river is mixing with this moss, and when that happens, it produces a weak plant acid. So lichens are pretty much plant acids. Now, it's not a very strong acid, so it doesn't eat away at the rocks and really intensely. You won't see big fizzing and all that stuff like the rock that we saw that got eaten away in class when I did that demonstration with the marble and the hydrochloric acid. But over time, it will eat away at these rocks. And lichens are, lichens are one of the number one producers of chemical weathering near rivers and streams because of the acids that they produce. All right, and here's our last one. We have acid precipitation, and all that means is anything to do with pollution falling down to the ground. Precipitation just means when something goes from the sky to the ground, when it falls from the sky to the ground. So here, check this out. Acid rain is probably something that you're pretty commonly familiar with. We have acid rain coming down here. We have pollution produced in our factories or from cars or from people and sulfur and nitrogen, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, nitro, uh, nitrogen oxide are put into the air, mixes with moisture within the air, becomes nitric acid or sulfuric acid, and comes down as rain. This rain here will 
foster chemical weathering all over rocks, all on the ground. But then we also have acid snow. A lot of people don't think about snow uh, as being able to be acidic and eat away at rocks, but it does. But then you also have solid particulates and gases within the atmosphere falling down, this dry deposition, they call it. Well, these things together can all chemically erode rocks all over the land. All right, so in this quick video, we introduced the types of chemical weathering. From the previous videos, you should already know the difference between weathering and erosion. If you have any questions about that, please feel free to go back and watch those videos. Make sure you took good detailed notes here. You're going to have a quiz on this material tomorrow. So please make sure you review these notes, show them to me in class. I'll give you a stamp, and then we'll go ahead and take our quiz. Again, if you feel free, if you have any questions, you can send me a message on Edmodo or send me an email.